Okay, so we've talked a lot about synchronization structures. There's more to come, but I really want to give more actual threading examples before we get too much into synchronization. Um, here I'm just kind of made up an example. I've been toying with the numbers a little bit offline, and I think I have something that finally works. I have this byte array of values, and whatever this big number is is how many values we're going to have. And I have this generate ints function or method, if you will. That essentially um, <coughs> makes a random number, or a, it generates random numbers <laughs> of ints, this many of them, okay? And I don't know why I call it int, probably because it's integer values, but then I shrink it down to a byte so I can stuff it in my array. So basically this method goes through this byte array and fills it up with random numbers 0 through 9. The reason why I'm using bytes here is because I was getting out of memory exceptions, and I wanted a lot of numbers, so I shrunk it down to bytes, and uh, 0 through 9 fit in a byte quite well. In fact, I could go up to, I guess, 0 through 15 if I wish to. But anyway, 0, zero through 9, making my array here. Now I want to I want to add all these values. I want to add them up or sum, S-U-M, sum these values up. So let's, uh, let's write a little code that's going to sum all these values after I generate them. So I'm going to say generate ints. And this process actually takes a while. So I'm going to come down here and say, okay, uh, summing... I'm going to say summing there, and I'm going to say for int i, i less than values dot length, i plus plus, uh, and then we need to sum. I'm going to say long total get zero, and I'm going to say total plus equals values sub i. Go on. Uh, and I'm going to take the curlies out because it's a one-liner. And then I'm down here, I'm going to say console write line um, total value is... Drum roll, and then the total. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And in fact, I'm actually going to put a hard-coded seed in here. Uh, I don't know, nine, eight, seven, and just so we can have the same random numbers every time I run this. So I'm trying to keep everything consistent uh, between runs. I'm going to Control F5. You see, it takes a while to generate the random numbers. We haven't seen the summing line print quite yet. We will shortly, though. There we go, summing. So now it's adding them all up. And there's the total uh, value of all those numbers added up. That was actually rather quick to add all those values up compared to it was to generate them. So RAND obviously has a little bit of cost, the uh, random number algorithm, uh, gener random number generation algorithm. Uh, I actually want to know how long it took to add all those numbers up. So I'm going to use a, a, a stopwatch to do that. I'm going to say um, stopwatch. Okay, stopwatch is in the system diagnostics namespace. I'm going to say watch, new stopwatch. I'm going to say uh, watch dot start. In fact, I wonder if there's an overload for the constructor to say start. Nope. Okay. So start the watch, sum them all up. I'm going to say watch dot stop. And then down here, I want to say console CW tab, console write line, uh, time to sum. And then watch dot elapsed milliseconds ticks. Uh, let's just go with elapsed returns a time span. We'll go with that. All right, Control F5. Wait for it to generate the numbers. Pause the video while we wait. Okay, now we have our summing. You see, it took 1.52ish seconds to add all those numbers up. Not, not very long if you think about it. Uh, I'll wait 1.52 seconds to add up. What number is this anyway? This is thousands, millions. Billions were not even up to the U.S. deficit. Oh well. Um, so 500 looks like 500 million uh, numbers in 1.5 seconds. To do that by hand, yeah, I'll wait 1.5 seconds. No big deal. But with, if you think about it, I have all these numbers out in RAM, and I have all the CPU power. And unfortunately, I'm just throwing all this work onto one thread. And if I'm smart, I'll divide and conquer. That is, I'll cut my data up in a multiple threads, one per CPU that's available, and say, add all this up. And so that's that's what I want to do here, is I want to break this up between multiple CPUs, multiple cores, if you would. And since I'm hyper-threaded, I actually have eight virtual cores. All right. So let's see if we can figure out a logical way to do that. We're going to be competing with everything else on my computer, if I bring this back up. Processes, look at all these processes. Just sitting in the background doing nothing when they could be doing something. 
I mean, that's, it makes me sick when I look at this. And as much as I try to mess around with my startups and all that, I still get all this junk that starts up. And it takes up memory, and it takes up uh, my CPU. It uh, looks like Camtasia, my recording software sitting in the background. And it's not really competing too hard for CPU time. But anyway, my CPU mostly sits empty. I have all this power in my machine here, and it's going highly unutilized. So let's try to utilize it even for a brief part of time to add up all these numbers that I actually am not going to use it to do anything but uh, these numbers that I'm not going to I'm not going to use the actual value that we sum for anything important but hey it gives our CPU something to do and it gives us an example to walk through so how are we going to break this up intelligently well the shared piece of data is this big long byte array that's what's going to be shared amongst all the threads now how many threads do I want well since I have eight cores I guess we'll just or eight eight uh, logical CPUs um, I'll, I'll go with eight. That's fine. Uh, I, maybe I should do seven or six just to leave a few CPUs to not compete so much. But, but we'll go with eight. Why not? I'm going to use all eight, and I'm going to divide this data up. In fact, let me uh, do a little drawing here. If you think about it, my there's several ways we could break this up. Let's do the most uh, contrived way. Wait, why is that not working? When in doubt, restart the program. So I'm making this... I mean, this is like a really long array, a picture, a really long array with 500 million numbers in it. And I think uh, my naive approach will be, let's just break it up into eight sections. Well, this isn't going to divide into eight, but hopefully you get the idea. I'm just going to break it up into eight sections, more of the array out here. Uh, and then just give each thread an equal amount of the array to add. All right, so so let's do that. In fact... Uh, Say, hey, that's that's where we're going with this. The next video, I'm actually going to break this logic up and allow the multiple threads to work on their own little portion. And we'll see a little bit of synchronization and uh, some actually thread coordination, which is much more interesting than, than uh, synchronization just by itself.